name is Chelsea and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we have my January book haul. Now, if you guys watch my 2021 reading resolutions video, you know that one of my big goals this year is to get my unread TBR books down. I started this year at like 517. I'm still reading for January, so I don't know my full numbers on that yet. I will probably have that maybe in like my wrap up video. We shall see. But I'm really hoping this month is going to be the biggest book haul of the year because it was my birthday in January and so I do have some books here that were gifts. I did not purchase them but I have them. I actually have, I think I have 15 books here including an Owl Crate unboxing that I have not done yet. We will do that at the end. I will leave the timestamp down below in case you guys just want that. Um, but yeah, 15 books here. I did stick to my goal of only purchasing three actual books in January, plus the out bless you, plus the owl crate that I'm going to unbox, and then I was actually able to sign up for a Luma crate for February, but I was able to get the January book, which is not here yet. They haven't shipped those out yet, so that might be added into the February book haul. But it is part of my reading resolutions for January, so I have so far stuck to all of my goals, which was the whole point. So we are going to actually start with birthday presents first. So these are all things that my friends have purchased for me and sent my way and I am extremely grateful for. Um, so I guess we're just going to jump into those. He has um, a toy saw here that apparently I have to have. <laughs> So the first books that we have here for presents are going to be from Isabel from Happy For Now. Do you want to hold one? Oh, he wants to hold book five. Okay. So she sent me over volumes three, four. Can we show them? Turn it around. Turn it this way. Show the camera. And five of The Promised Neverland by Caillou Shirai. I watched the first season of the show. I don't know if season two is out yet. I think I saw something about it recently, but I'm not sure. But I watched the first season of the show a while ago, absolutely loved it, and read volumes one and two during the 25 days of manga, which was in December, and I absolutely loved the volumes. They held up to the anime so well, but the anime does go forward more than those first two volumes. And so I think, because I took a little sneak peek at the back of book five, I do think the anime for the first season ends at the end of volume five. So I definitely want to read these. I am so, so grateful that she sent these my way because I absolutely love the what I was reading before. I love the show. I love Isabel as well. She reads a lot of manga, but she also reads a lot of romance. So I'm gonna leave all the channels linked down below because I'm pretty sure every single person that I'm friends with is currently active on their booktube channels. He's gonna keep a hold of that one apparently. The next one that we have here is The Similars by Rebecca Hanover. This one was sent by Michelle from Michelle Reads YA. She's another booktuber I absolutely adore. She has a son around Presley's age as well, so uh, I just love her so much. She does read a lot of YA, obviously, but she also reads other age groups and stuff like that as well. Um, and this one has been on my wish list for a while. I don't actually remember too much about it. However, it definitely gives me dark academia vibes, um, and there's something about clones. Like, they're DNA duplicates of current students, and I'm just so curious to see what this will all be about. The next one I have here is going to be Middle Game by Shauna McGuire. This was sent to me from Christina from the Northwest Reader. I will again leave her channel link down below. She is another one that I have become friends with in the last year, and she also has a son around Presley's age, and so I feel like it's very easy for me to sort of become friends with like, these booktube moms. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just because we have shared experiences. We're closer in age than some of the other booktubers out there, but I absolutely love them, and I'm so, so grateful to have this one. I, for whatever reason, only really started reading Shauna McGuire in 2020, and I have a lot that I want to read because she is such a prolific writer, and I had not owned this one, and I'm very, very excited for it. I actually don't know too much about it. It follows a pair of twins who were created, I think, and I think there's more science aspect, time travel potentially aspect. It just sounds 
super intriguing and I'm so so happy that she sent it my way because I I'm so ready for it the next one we have here is Soul of the Sword by Julie Kagawa. This is the second book in the Shadow of the Fox series. This one was sent to me by Lena from Sufficiently Advanced Lena. Again, another booktuber I absolutely adore. She reads so much adult, especially sci-fi and fantasy, and I'm always watching her channel and getting more books added to my want to read list on Goodreads because she reads so much. That just sounds so good. Um, but yeah, this is the second book in a YA fantasy series about a nine-tailed fox, and I absolutely love the first one. It was one of my honorable mentions for my top of like 2020 list, and I, I'm just so happy to have this. It's such a good book, and I really probably want to reread the first one before I dive into this, but I'm very excited for it. That's your dust jacket. The book's upstairs, though. We take his just jackets off his book and we bought this one yesterday. Uh, it's a Doctor Who one for him, but the book's actually upstairs because we read it last night. Um, it's just a dust jacket, baby. There's no book in there. And then the next one that we have here is going to be The Black Flamingo by Dean Adda. This is a novel told in verse about a boy who finds the drag scene, I believe it is. I could be mistaken, but everybody that reads this apparently loves it. It like it's very hard hitting emotionally and I am so so excited to have this. This was sent to me by Olivia Savannah from Olivia's Catastrophe. I will leave again her channel linked down below and she loves this. I know she's currently attempting to write a novel in verse and so that's why she's been reading a lot of novels in verse and she loved this one so I'm so happy to have it. This is the hardcover and it is gorgeous underneath. We just have like tons of flamingos under there and yes I'm very very ready for this one okay the next two books i have here were also gifts they were gifts from my husband um and i'm not counting them in my like what i purchased book total because he just went on my wish list and bought me books he said that he judged them basically by he read the like first chapter or something off of amazon and if he thought it was a book that he might want to read he bought it for me so the first one that we have here is going to be Tarnished Are the Stars by Rosie Thor. This is a YA sci-fi. I don't fully remember what this is about. Okay, so apparently this follows a, three different characters it looks like. Anna is a technician with a mechanical heart. She's an outlaw who provides illegal medical technology to the sick and injured. Her newest patient is Nathaniel, the commissioner's son, who basically the commissioner is like out for her and Nathaniel's trying to catch her. And then there's also Eliza, who is a skilled assassin and spy. But it says the more she discovers and the closer she and Anna become, the more she questions where her true allegiances lie. Is this sapphic? Because, like, I'm ready for it if it is. And then he also picked up Given by Nandy Taylor. This was originally a Wattpad book. I don't think I've actually ever read one personally that was originally a Wattpad story before it got published. But this one is a fantasy with, I think this is a dragon? I'm pretty sure it's a dragon. But the cover is really, really cool. Bound by fate, divided by duty, Yenny has never been this far from home. With only her wits, her strength, and her sacred rune lore, the fierce Yoruba warrior princess is alone in the empire of Kresh. It's a land filled with strange magics and even stranger people, many of whom mistrust anyone who's different. But Yenny will prove herself and find the cure for her father's wasting illness. She will not fail. No one warned her about the dragons, especially not about him. Okay, there's a violent black dragon named Waish. I'm really sorry if I'm mispronouncing these things. I'm really bad at like fancy name pronunciation. But yeah, so there is a dragon. Hey! We also have a map and everything. So I'm again just very, very intrigued by it. The next book that we have here actually... Okay. Yes, hi baby. Go this way. The next I actually have here I was reached out to by an author I believe they are self-published or independently published for a physical arc of a book I have never actually received like a physical arc from an author before when I worked at Barnes & Noble we got to have some every so often and take some home but more often than not they were in genres and stuff that I wasn't really too interested in but this is I believe supposed to be a YA fantasy about like a boy that goes to like a military academy but then there's like mysterious happenings and magic and the synopsis is sort of vague but I was very curious especially with a cover like this I'm again very curious this though <laughs> hi where are you going is a 700 and like 70 page fantasy novel so this is a thick heavy brick of a book 
but I'm very excited. So on the back, it says, welcome to the Morrency Academy of Military Arts. As one of our students, we expect that you will fight till the end and win by any means necessary. Now that you're here, there are a few things you should be made aware of. Firstly, be mindful of the water's edge. The mermaids are not always to be trusted and the dolphins are quite unreliable. Second, try not to get lost in the catacombs. Should you wander too far, your safety cannot be guaranteed. And remember, be wary of the jungle. The trees like to rearrange themselves. And do steer clear of the vines, lest you not return from your adventure intact or even alive. We hope to see you at the end of your games, should you make it that far. I don't think this is on Goodreads yet because I'm pretty sure I tried to look it up and see exactly what everything was about, but I could not find it. I'll have to double check on that, but I do believe this comes out in May sometime, so I will be reading it within the next couple months so that we can do a review on it. Finally, we're getting into the books that I purchased for myself. One of them does not count for my buying ban this year because I actually funded the Kickstarter last year but it came in, got delivered in January, and that is gonna be For Goodness Sake, Volume Two by Kaylin Smith. I absolutely love the first book of this graphic novel series, and it definitely was one of my top comics, graphic novels, manga of 2020, and I talked about it then a little bit, but this is Volume Two. This follows two main characters. We have Thatcher, who looks sort of devilish here, and Rain Waters, and basically he has been cursed so that like every misdeed or mean thing that he does turns him more devilish, more demonish. And Rain has taken it upon herself to try to cure him by making him nicer. And the end of book one was a little bit of a cliffhanger and so I'm very excited for book two. She does have these on her website because she is self-published, indie published, and uh, I just absolutely love the first one. So I have been funding her Kickstarter stuff and I'm so, so excited for this. Okay, and then I actually did just go to the bookstore yesterday because two of the books that I decided I wanted to pick up in January came out yesterday. One of them came out at the very beginning of January, but two of them came out on January 26th or something like that. I don't remember, but they just came out. One of those is Big Bad Wolf by Salika Snyder. This is a paranormal romance first book in a new series that I'm very excited about. I don't remember everything about it because I'm just bad with synopses, but basically we have one of our characters who took out the mobsters responsible for killing his foster brother in an act of vigilante justice, and then I believe the other person is his lawyer. So Neha, is a lawyer and psychologist and she knows Joe is guilty but she's determined to help him craft a solid defense even if she can't defend her own obsession. But again, we have paranormal romance. I'm very excited for this one. I just absolutely love the cover. It is technically a mass market but like wider than normal mass markets which is interesting but I'm so excited to have this. And then the other book that came out yesterday is We Could Be Heroes by Mike Chen. This the synopsis when I did my like anticipated releases for January to March of 2021 definitely got me. It seems very humorous. Basically we have two characters who have some sort of like superpowers. One is like using his powers to rob banks and the other is using her like power of speed to like deliver fast food. And I think they go to like a superhero, maybe it's not a superhero, but like a support group for people like themselves. and. Um, they could be heroes. I don't know much else, but I'm very excited. Also, if you guys can see this, maybe, there is a cat on the cover. It is so small, and I didn't realize there was a cat on the cover until I picked it up yesterday, and I was like, okay, you're intriguing me even more just because you have a cat on the cover. And then finally, the book that I also picked up that came out at the beginning of this month is one of the good ones by Maika and Maritza Malik. This is one that, again, the synopsis really got to me. Like, it gave me chills when I first read it, and I knew I had to pick it up. Basically, this follows two sisters. Their third sister was killed in some sort of unforeseen, mysterious circumstances, but she was a social activist, so she's sort of being immortalized as a victim of police brutality, and she's being also sort of immortalized as a good person, even though both of her sisters know that there is more to her than just doing the right thing for certain things like that. She's not like maybe a perfect person. I don't actually know much else. I didn't want to look into it too much, but the synopsis, like the part that really got to me 
was the fact that like happy begins to question the idealized way her sister is remembered perfect angelic one of the good ones good, 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 even as the good, phrase good. rings wrong in her mind why are only certain people deemed worthy to be missed like it just gets me every single time i'm so so excited for this one but i'm popping in because i do have my lumicrate book for january i was only able to get the book slot but i'm still very very excited I'm loving these like teal edges on here and this is one of my most anticipated books of the year so yes very excited I'm missing the pin I was supposed to get a pin with this book but it's gone hi Presley come sit with mama but we have Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell this is supposed to be a sci-fi like sort of red white and royal blue type of book and i'm very very excited this is also the uk cover which i just saw earlier today in an email from orbit and i had only ever seen the us cover and i love this cover so much more so i'm so so excited that i was able to actually get this one. Oh, i am loving this so much oh underneath we have a purple book and it says your grace and then your highness oh I'm so so excited okay um I'm gonna just read the synopsis I guess for you guys because I don't think I can give you much more than what I already said based on what I know about this but it says duty politics space princes and rebellious royals the Iscat Empire dominates its vassal planets through a system of treaties so when Prince Tom key figure in a political alliance is killed a replacement must be found his widower Jainan is rushed into an arranged marriage with the disreputable aristocrat Kaim in a bid to keep rising hostilities between two worlds under control but Prince Tom's death may not have been an accident and when Jainan himself is a suspect he and Kaim must must learn to trust one another as they navigate the perils of the Iscat court, try to solve a murder, and prevent an interplanetary war. Um, and it does say it is perfect for fans of Gideon the Ninth and The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, but like I said, I've also heard it compared a little bit to like red, white, and royal blue in the romance aspect of it. <sighs> this cover is freaking gorgeous. I'm so so ready for it I'm a little sad that I don't have the pin because the book only option was also supposed to come with a pin and my box actually says like on the customs part of the form or whatever book and pin and I don't have a pin but I have a gorgeous book which is also blurbed on the front and also on the back by Martha Wells and I love her stuff too so mm, so so ready and then now we are down to the Owl Crate unboxing. This is one that people have been posting already. I, the last couple months of Owl Crate have been on the like end of receiving the box. I don't know if it's because my last name starts with a Z or if it's just like they do rotations of who gets their boxes sent out first, but we've been on the end of it for the last couple months. And so once people have already posted their unboxings and I still haven't received it yet, we just end up saving it for this I guess um but yeah I'm very excited I know what the book is um and I'm very very excited for it I have not seen any spoilers yet and I absolutely love the original cover and I don't know how they've changed it for Owl Crate because Owl Crate does do exclusive covers so I'm a little bit apprehensive about that um but otherwise I guess we're gonna jump in I already cut the tape the pin fell out he's trying to open it because he loves this stuff do you want to show them the pin i'm going to show the camera oh that's the back can you show the front look this way show the camera no try again show the camera good enough okay that's our pin it fell so i'm stealing it for a second <laughs> this is our pin right there yes you can have it there you go okay here is going to be the spoiler card art the theme is from Olympus with love. I will leave all of the artists as well linked down below because I'm probably not going to have the opportunity to double check on them in between each thing. He wants this box so bad. First thing that we have in here is Riddle's Tea Shop, Nectar of the Gods, an Owl Crate exclusive. This is going to be tea, obviously. Um, I don't really drink tea, 
but it has peach flavor, peach pieces, marigold flowers, apple pieces, vanilla flavor, caramel flavor, apricots, marigold flowers. I don't know, it sounds sort of fruity. I really do prefer iced tea. So um, I probably will try this though because I do like the fact that it seems like it's gonna be sort of fruity. He's falling over over here. Uh, the older he gets, the more chaos I feel like we're gonna have in these videos. Okay, next thing we have here looks to have moon phases on it, which is very intriguing to me because I do love anything that's like moon, stars, space. Okay, whatever it is, it's very pretty. It looks like maybe just like a tapestry though. Okay, interesting. Can, you, can we see the whole thing? Did you guys see it? You see it, okay, you see it. I do love the art style on here, but it looks like it's just like a moon phase calendar, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but like, what am I supposed to do with it? One thing I will say, because I have seen some of my friends unbox this, and like, when I say seen, I did not actually click on the videos yet, sorry guys, I hadn't opened my own box, but I had seen their titles, and a lot of the titles were like, I don't like this box or is owl crate still worth it and one thing I will say is I don't personally like these just sort of hang it up on your wall stuff because I already have too many things on my walls my entire living room is basically bookshelves and my office is already like really full so like I don't see the point of some of these I do like this one more than this because I feel like I would probably use this a little bit more. I love the design on this but again it's not really my thing. I love how we've gotten some like kitcheny things from Owl Crate in the past so like I'm hoping for more of those eventually um, and as I say that I pull out a wooden bookmark so I do love these as well. So here is the first side and I do love how like this part is metallic. You can see the shininess. And this side says, There are rare moments when another soul dips near yours as stars once a year brush the earth. Such a constellation was he to me. And then this is the other side. I do love this detailing down here, especially with, like, again, the more metallic parts. And this one says, I would know him in death at the end of the world. So I do love a good wooden bookmark. Next is a big thing here. Hermes Letterboard. Use this mini letterboard to create fun messages you can display in your home. Favorite book quotes, morning mantras, inside jokes, whatever your heart desires. Keep all the letters in the super cute zipper pouch for easy storage. Cute. Okay. I do like letterboards. I don't actually own more than one. And the one that I do own is actually in Presley's room. It says, you make me happy when skies are gray. And that was actually a present that we got my grandmother for Mother's Day a few years ago. And she passed like a year and a half ago, actually like five days before he was born. So we moved her letterboard into his room. But yes, you want to show the camera? Good job. Thank you. This is the bag that comes with it to put the letters in. And actually, I do like this. I like the fact that it has a couple different pouches. Um, I personally don't like the fact that it's a felt bag, but that's just because I don't like the texture of that very much. But then we have all of our letters. I'm obviously not going to be doing the letters right now, but it also comes with like lots of more letters little emojis and stuff too which is actually sort of cool because the letter boards i have seen in the past did not have that uh and then this is our letter board i'm actually holding it upside down because it has a way that you can hang it up on the back but i actually i actually like this thing this is this is pretty cute i might use this and then i think we're down to our book now okay so here's our book it is in its wrapping one thing I will say, I do, <laughs> no, 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 no. I told you, the older he gets, the more chaos we have here. Sorry about that. I do try to film sometimes while he is napping, but I need to edit some stuff while he's napping today because I only get to really do stuff for me when he's asleep, napping or in bed at night. And so um, we needed to film before that. But like I was saying, one thing I will say is I do actually prefer the original cover better. It is basically the same thing as this cover, but we had a white background. And there was something about the fact... I can't open this. Oh my gosh. But yes, there was something about like the marble statue with a white background that I really, really enjoyed. I don't mind this, but I just liked 
the original cover a little better. Also, I don't know if it's because they shrink wrapped it or not. They have dented the actual dust jacket. It has formed to the book. I don't know if you can see, you can see it right there. That bugs me a little bit, but overall, he's still trying to show you guys his pin. Good job, baby. But overall, I'm not mad at it. Like I understand that this is what they had to do. Um, Owl Crate does exclusive covers and <laughs> the plastic. Sometimes, I don't know, I prefer the original one, but they're so used, to, you're, you're saw? They're so used to doing like new covers that they feel like they have to do something to do it. <laughs> you're gonna saw the book? You don't need to saw the book. Oh, thank you. you do that there? Okay, but yes. So, this is our letter from the author, but this is what the original cover was. So again, I just really like the white better than the black. There's something about it that just, I like more. Our dust jacket does not have any art underneath, which is what they were doing last year in 2020. So just white underneath there, but our end papers are a map. I don't know if there were maps on the end papers on the original cover or not. It is going to be signed because it is Owl Crate. And yeah, I'm very, very excited for this. I actually did have this as an e arc sample. <laughs> He's bringing me the TBR bucket. We're not doing that today, baby. Come here. We're not doing the TBR bucket today. I'm sorry. Why is the magic What do you? Oh, you go get your thing. You want to go get your stuff? Go get it. So I actually did have this as an e-arc sample. Nat Galley had it put up as Lore by Alexander Bracken and I requested it and then when it actually came in, it came with an email that was like, oh, by the way, this is a sample. If you want to request the actual arc, you can do that in like two more months. And I requested that and got denied. So I have read the sample. I'm very curious about this world. I don't know a ton, but it is Greek mythology set in the modern day. There are like warring clans. Somebody has killed Lore's family basically. And I'm very excited to actually read the full book. Um, but yeah, I do think I like the white cover better, which is not, again, not a bad thing, but that's a me preference. I still really do like Owl Crate's covers and everything like that. I'm really hoping we have less cloth items next month just because I don't have a place for them. But yes, we do love the pins. The pin actually says the eyes of the gods are upon you because he won't let me <laughs> take it from him. That's it. We're done. Next month's theme is going to be Magic Unleashed. I'm pretty sure I know what the book is for that one, but off the top of my head, I can't remember. And every February box will include a book tin designed by Forensics and Flowers. So that's what this side here is. And I do believe they said that their book tins for 2021 are going to be like their collector's items. So we're going to have one every so often until we end up having four. And each one is going to be a book that could be found in a London from the Darker Shades of Magic series. So I don't know which London we're gonna get in February, but we should eventually get one for black, gray, white, and red. That will be very exciting to me because I love that series. So that is it. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to this channel if you would like to see more videos or more crying babies. I have videos up Mondays, Thursdays, and sometimes Saturdays, so I will see you then. Bye.